Okay, so I was trying to go live on Facebook, but it kept losing the signal, so I guess that didn't work out. <clears throat> so, the hubs and I have been back here while he's doing his treatment. Um, we've just been going through the Bible. We started in the Song of Songs, and we've ended up in Matthew, um, talking about all kinds of different things. So right now I'm fixing to just we're fixing to wrap it up because he is almost finished with his treatment now. So um, maybe next time we can have a longer visit. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap it up here with the parable of the lost sheep. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I tell you. There are angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that had wandered off. Oops, that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. That part right there always reminds me of the song that talks about a crazy radical love. It's a crazy radical love that God has for us. If one of his sheep goes astray, loses its way, He's going to leave the rest of us behind because he's got to go find that last sheep, that one that has lost its way. And when he finds that sheep and brings it back home, all of heaven's rejoicing over that one sheep that went astray. And that's what you call a crazy radical love. That's the kind of radical love that we should have for Christ. Because Christ had that kind of radical love for us. He went to the cross. He died. He was beaten beyond recognition as a man. And that, that is a radical love. That is a crazy radical love. And that's the kind of radical love we should have for him. Because one of these days, if you're not strong in your faith and somebody says renounce Christ or die what kind of faith do you have? Are you going to deny him and live? Or are you going to surrender and say I know him and I love him and die? Because the Bible's very clear that anyone that dies for the sake of Christ, they automatically inherit the kingdom of heaven. They automatically receive their rewards. You can deny you can deny him if you want, but as for me, I pray that when that day comes, my faith is so strong. And that my love for him is so radical yeah. that I will just look straight at them and say, well, I guess you're just going to kill me. That's right. Amen. Draw your sword, cut my head off, shoot me, whatever you're going to do, do it. That's the kind of faith I hope I have when that day comes. Because he definitely had that kind of love for me, so I might as well have that kind of love for him. have been back here we've talked about a lot of things we've talked about what goes in here and here comes out here and I know there's a lot of y'all out there that watch Yellowstone so don't even start it because uh, <laughs> that was one of the examples I used I refuse to watch Yellowstone I do um, matter of fact when he's watching it 
I'm either crocheting with my earbuds in because I'm not listening or I'm I go some to a different room um, the language is just too much for me I can't I cannot deal with the language okay um, and that was the example I used you know, because it's F that, F this. I mean, it's horrible. I've heard GD, all kinds of stuff in there. And I'm not, if you watch it, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, I know a lot of people that watch it. Okay. Um, but I don't want those words going in here and in here because it comes out here. Okay. Um, that's why I watch a lot of, um, good wholesome shows you know um, my girls tell me I'm old because I watch a lot of your wholesome shows from the 50s 60s 70s 80s you know we even had good wholesome shows in the 90s you know and those are the kind of things I watch you know and if I'm not watching that then I'm listening to my preaching on KBNE I'm listening to KBNE um, uh, the Well is what I was thinking of. The Well, which is preaching. It's a sister station. Um, because I want good things coming out of my mouth. Okay. I know too many people that sit there and they say, Oh, God is number one in my life. And then they turn around. GD this, GD that. Where's God being number one in your life? Where? I'm not judging you. I'm judging your fruits. And we're allowed to do that. We are allowed to judge each other's fruits. Okay? Because your tree is either going to be healthy and produce good fruit, or your tree is going to be sick and not produce fruit at all. And if it does produce fruit, the fruit's not going to last long. It's going to wither and decay. Um, right here, it says in chapter 7 of Matthew, do not judge, or you too will be judged, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Matthew 7:15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves, but their fruit will be recognized. Oh, by their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. The first part of that passage is what I was talking about, about judging people by their fruit. If they follow Christ, they live their life for Christ, you're going to see it in their fruit. If they don't, you're going to see that in their fruit. The second half of that, there's going to be many people that are out there today claiming to be a Christian. That they live for Christ. Their life is all about Christ. They're out there preaching and teaching. But on that day, the Lord may look at some of them and say, that he does not know them. And what I'm talking about is people that claim to be Christians, but yet they're still out there fornicating. They're still out there um, stealing. They're still out there coveting their wives. 
uh, their their neighbors' wives, their neighbors' things. They're still out there um, living wicked lives, basically. But yet they're out there prophesying, and they're preaching, and they're teaching. They're the false prophets that the Bible's speaking of here. If you truly love Jesus, if you truly love God, if you truly are trying to live your life for Him, you're not going to intentionally still go out and commit these sins against God. You're not going to do it because your heart's not going to allow you to. Do I sin? Yes, I do. And do I do it intentionally? No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't intentionally go out. I don't wake up every morning and intentionally plan out my day of sin. I'm human. I'm fallible. I'm going to sin. But it's not that I'm choosing to. The difference between sinning and choosing to sin is what you're doing. If you're sitting there and you are committing adultery and you say, Oh, I love the Lord more than everything in my heart. And the Lord has told me, I have to stop committing adultery. But yet you're still out doing it. You're willfully sitting. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the scripture here is talking about. When it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father. So if he's telling you you're sinning by committing that adultery, but yet you're still going to do it, even though he's convicted you of it, and you're still out there doing it, you're not doing the will of your father. You're sinning. Period. And unless you turn from that, and you start doing the will of the father, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven, because God's going to look at you on that day, and he's going to say, I do not know you. And if that's what you want, then you keep doing what you're doing. As for me, I want Jesus to look at me. I want God to look at me on that day yeah. and say, Welcome in, my daughter. Welcome in. Welcome home. You have done my will. But am I a sinner? Yes. I'd rather be an honest sinner than a liar. Do I go out willfully and commit these sins? No, I don't. I don't go out looking for it. The Lord, 12 years ago when I came to Him, told me, you got to quit drinking, you got to quit doing the drugs. I laid it down. Walked away. And that was hard. Two years ago, when my husband got sick, the Lord told me, you got to quit smoking. I laid it down and walked away. Because he convicted me in my heart that I was sinning. When the Lord convicts you to do something or to stop doing something, and you keep willfully doing it, that's when it becomes a sin. So I don't want to ever hear God tell me that he does not know me and that I need. It says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Some Bibles say you works of iniquity. So we're fixing to wrap this up because his treatment's almost finished. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close with prayer. Um, and if you feel like praying, then you can go ahead and pray. If you feel that you need to come to Christ, today is the perfect day to do that. Right now, right here, wherever you're at. It's very simple. All you have to do is say, God, I know I'm a sinner. And today is the day I choose you to come into my heart. I welcome you into my heart. I know that you died for me. I know that you rose again for me. 
It's that simple. Father God, we just come before you today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that we've received, Lord. Lord, uh, we thank you that you convict our hearts daily of the sins that we do commit, Father. Lord Jesus, um, I just pray, Lord, that I never go out willfully looking to commit sins, Father, against you. Because, Lord, that would break your heart, Father. And in turn, it would break my heart, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you look over everyone that's watching this today, Father, Lord. Lord, I just ask that if they're lost, that this be the day, Father, that they come to your saving grace, Lord. That they make you the Lord and Savior of their lives, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I don't want to ever hear you have to tell me to get away because father I love you more than anything in this world I love you more than my own life father yes. Lord Jesus I just pray for those out there Lord that are seeking things father and they're they're filling voids in their lives with things that don't mean anything father but Lord they need to turn to you father and fill the voids with you every inch of those voids father lord i pray for those that are out there hurting today father lord hurting spiritually hurting physically hurting mentally father however they're hurting lord i just pray that you reach down that you touch them father yeah. that you help that pain father lord i pray for the women that are barren out there today lord lord i pray that you reach down touch their wounds and open them lord yeah. father allow life to prosper and live in those wounds father Lord, I pray for the drug addictions. I pray for the alcohol addictions, the cigarette addictions, Father. Lord, I pray that you reach down and remove those addictions from each and every person, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just be with those that are struggling today, whatever, spiritually, financially, whatever the struggle is, Lord, I pray that you reach down, that you touch those struggles. Lord, I pray for the single mothers out there today, Father, the single daddies out there today, Father. Lord, just let them know that they are doing a good job, Father. Lord, and if they if they are single mommies and daddies, Lord, and they don't know you, then, Lord, I pray that you impress upon their hearts that the best thing they can do for their children is to follow you. Father, that they can be the example for their children to follow a loving Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the good, good Father and that you love us with a radical love. And Father, we just ask that you just watch over us and guide us as we go through the rest of our day. And we say all of these things through the blessed, holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bye.